Intel's launch of Rocket Lake seems to have struck a rather negative chord amongst the reviewer community. Is Rocket Lake really that bad? Did Intel sabotage the launch? How did it all go so wrong? Let's get into it. The reviews of Rocket Lake are out and the consensus is clear. Intel did not take back the gaming crown from AMD. Sure, they had some wins in specific games along the way. However, in the majority of the games, you see that AMD's rise in wins. I was a bit surprised by this since I expected Intel to come back and win in more games than they lost to take back the gaming crown. And even after watching and reading so many of the reviews, I'm still left wondering why. I'll get into that later. However, the perception of the performance of the entirety of Intel's 11th generation is driven primarily from the reactions to the flagship CPU, the i9-11900K, a CPU that is named and priced to go up against AMD's Ryzen 9 5900X, the reigning CPU king. But is Rocket Lake really that bad? If you look at the performance of the i9-11900K versus the Ryzen 7 5800X, so that's 8 cores versus 8 cores, you see that Intel is very competitive. Even the comparisons of the i5-11600K versus the Ryzen 5 5600X, that's 6 cores versus 6 cores, you also see that Intel is very competitive. And if you compare Rocket Lake versus Comet Lake, core for core, you also see noticeable improvements in performance. What you'll notice is that Intel greatly closed the gap in productivity with Ryzen 5000 core for core. However, they did not move the needle much in gaming performance. It improved slightly, but not as significantly as productivity. And again, we'll talk about that one later. If the performance core for core is better than last generation and is competitive with AMD's 5000 products, then how did this launch go so wrong? Did Intel create this impending doom situation? Is this self-inflicted? I propose this was a self-inflicted launch disaster. Intel chose to do this to themselves. And the fact that they could not foresee this coming, or didn't care, is very telling on how broken Intel is as a company. Even the unique box design they use, to me, looks like a box damaged in shipping. Maybe rightfully so, a broken box for a broken company. So just think about this for a moment. At some point, Intel executives had meetings on Rocket Lake, and someone must have pitched the idea that Intel's 11th gen flagship would have only 8 cores. And Intel executives decided that it could pit their 8 cores against the best in the world gaming processor with 12 cores from AMD. Now I raised my concerns on that way back in January after virtual CES 2021. To me, the comparison is like having a middleweight go against a heavyweight. How do you think that's going to go? When I saw the presentation from virtual CES, I thought that to pit 8 cores against 12 cores, then the gaming performance of these cores must be very, very good. Looking back, I can't figure out how Intel executives didn't fall out of their chairs laughing. I'm sure AMD execs did, or at the very least, challenged the concept of 8 cores versus 12 cores. Why did they not ask the hard questions and for the data to prove 8 cores of Rocket Lake is worthy of i9 status and to compete against Ryzen 9? After seeing the reviews, for me, this is just more evidence of a culture within Intel that is more focused on satisfying shareholders with profits than delivering products that can actually compete and provide value to their customers. Not only did they lose to the Ryzen 9 5900X, they even lost many times to the 5800X. To make matters worse, they even lost in several situations to their very own 10th gen i9, the 10 core i9 10900K. But that's not the best part. They also raised the price from the last gen i9 from $488 all the way up to $539. How did Intel's executives not know this was going to be a failed product launch? What is sad is that this comes after so many other setbacks, but I guess they feel like they needed to add just one more. You see, Intel has been trying to rebuild itself after suffering some major setbacks. We all know about being stuck on 14 nanometers. They lost their business to Apple, and after this release, is it any wonder why Apple cut Intel off after the 10th gen? Can you imagine the discussion when Intel pitched the 11th gen to Apple execs? Hey, Tim Apple, we have an exclusive deal for you. We have a new i9 processor that has fewer cores, runs hotter, and costs more. Now how many would you like to buy? And now they figure they can make fun of Apple by hiring their previous, I'm a Mac guy, Justin Long, to talk up Intel laptops. Brilliant marketing idea. Let's poke Apple in the eye and see if they come around to seeing it our way and have us make Apple ARM chips in our new fabs. 
Not only that, Intel has been losing mind share to the do-it-yourself community for the past couple of years, and with the launch of Ryzen 5000 last November, it seems the floodgates just opened up and it became the tipping point where now people don't even want to consider Intel. It's Ryzen or nothing. Just look at how robust the sales of Ryzen 3000 CPUs are right now. And that CPU launched in July of 2019. Intel is so broken. Was this launch disaster avoidable? Absolutely. The way Intel positioned and priced the 11th Gen i9 makes the Ryzen 7 5800X look like a good value. It's not. And I'm not alone in thinking that. That is the one Ryzen 5000 CPU you see available in stock. You can get my thoughts on why in my video, link above and below. Intel torpedoed the whole Rocket Lake lineup with that one SKU in the i9. Just as a flagship CPU can raise up the lineup of CPUs under it, it can also bring it down. The whole generation of Rocket Lake is being compared to AMD's bulldozer moment, and that was objectively bad. The performance of Rocket Lake doesn't warrant that comparison, however, Intel's greed and marketing brings that comparison to life. If Intel would have decided to not release an i9 for the 11th gen, just imagine how much criticism they could have avoided. If we just look at the performance of the 11th gen i5 and i7 and compare it to the 10th gen i5 and i7, you can see a measurable improvement in performance. The up to 19% performance improvement claim was not a lie. And it turns out that the 11th gen closed the gap considerably in productivity compared to Ryzen CPUs. Reviewers would have compared the i7 to the Ryzen 7. And while it would not beat it in productivity or gaming, the difference would not have been that significant. And by having the MSRP of $399 for the 11700K and $374 for the 11700KF, with no integrated graphics like the Ryzen, that's $75 cheaper than Ryzen. Another way to view it is that the Ryzen 7 costs 12 to 20% more. And to satisfy all those Intel loyalists, they could have created a special edition version of the i7, which is today's i9, and called it the i7-11700KS. They've done this before, like in the 8th gen i7 with the i7-8086, and then replayed that with the 9th gen with the i9-9900KS. Those were just highly binned CPUs. Those CPUs went for ridiculous prices, and I'm sure loyalists would have easily paid $600 or more for this special edition version. This way, Intel would have been able to get those ridiculous prices while also have avoided all comparisons to Ryzen 9. Intel would at least have been perceived as being honest about their lineup, and while they can't take on Ryzen 9 right now, they will with Alder Lake coming later this fall. This generation could have been Intel's olive branch to reach the do-it-yourself community by offering them products that are, one, in stock, two, very competitive, not number one, but not very far behind either, and three, at a very good price. I can't imagine the profits gained on that i9 will be worth the hit Intel takes to its reputation. It will take them far more time and energy to repair that reputation. They just further cemented themselves as a company that is not to be trusted. And why does anyone want to buy from a company that you don't trust? So Intel did not take back the gaming crown. Ryzen 5000 series is the best productivity and gaming CPU in the world. But with Intel's greed, they decidedly added to that narrative and Rocket Lake now has the reputation of somewhat of a joke and something to be avoided. So why doesn't Rocket Lake perform much better in gaming versus 10th gen Comet Lake? It does have much better IPC. In fact, it beats Ryzen in Geekbench single core score. I've never seen anything higher and is right there in Cinebench single core scores. Does it have issues maintaining high clock frequencies? Is the new memory controller with its Gear 1 and Gear 2 modes hurting it more than it is helping it? With this failed launch, it seems no one is purchasing these CPUs and they are not sold out. On one hand, it's very refreshing to be able to purchase some new tech right after launch. Since they are in stock and available, I should be getting mine within the next week and I'll be doing some benchmarking to dive into why. If you like content like this, hit the like button, subscribe and hit notifications so you will know when the next video comes out. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one.